Good evening. This is Lee Smith, and this is Over the Target Live. We have a really spectacular show tonight. I'm going to be speaking with uh, tech executive and entrepreneur Brian Costello, also a friend, and he's going to have some really amazing and important information uh, about the U.S. relationship with the Chinese Communist Party and the basis of it, which is the financial relationship, which is uh, which has hurt America badly over the last several decades. I get live, and thanks so much for being with us tonight. Hey, Lee. Uh, thanks very much for having me on the show. And uh, this is one of the one of the new episodes, right? In the new show. Yeah, so it's our second episode. Yeah. It's our second yeah, it's, episode. It's, so uh, thank you for for being with us. Yeah, and it's uh, and you know thank you for uh, giving some new voices a chance to discuss what I think are very important topics for the American people. Thanks. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you want to tell us, if you want to give us a little, just a little bit of background on uh, on your experience in the uh, in the tech sector and how that managed to intersect at different times with uh, with Chinese Communist Party officials, sure. And most significantly with the interest of the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, I'm getting old now, so I've been at this tech game for 30 years. So uh, originally from the Boston area. Grew up there, was fortunate, started a tech company at a pretty young age uh, and, and got a lot of experience with that in terms of raising capital and accessing markets. And early on, I uh, took investment from a Middle East fund called Invest Corp. So I learned a lot about global investment structures mm -hmm. and how those work and how other people are investing in the country. From there, I went on to work for a company that we sold a company in Silicon Valley, a company called Verisign that was in the information security space, did a lot of stuff on the national security side. And, worked with a lot of corporations, uh, left there, did some other startup stuff, some investing stuff, and then um, spent a lot of time in San Francisco. And then in 2014, mm -hmm. 15, my wife and I and our kids got sick of the cold weather. We moved to LA. At the time <laughs> I had started, uh, the irony is we're on live video now. So at the time with some business partners, we had started a live video platform. Huh. And the idea was that we wanted to let content creators bring their bot business model next to the platform. So hmm. you could bring in your, you know, great new book, the plot against the president and have it for sale right here, or you could feed in advertising my pillow or something like that. So uh, we were working on that. China was actually ahead of at the time, China was hmm. investing a lot in Hollywood. Um, Wanda group had put money into all the major studios. Uh, they were buying I'm sorry, what, 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 what group was that again? I didn't catch that. Uh, Wong John Lin at the time was it's called Wanda Group. Um, mm -hmm. And he had actually put money into all the big Hollywood LA studios. Mm -hmm. He had bought a little uh, movie theater chain called AMC Theaters, which has mm -hmm. since been in the news. I've heard he of was, it. I've, I've, I've seen motion yeah, pictures. Yeah. He was considered the Warren Buffett of uh, uh, mm -hmm. China at the time until the Chinese Communist Party decided to rain on his parade at, at, at mm -hmm. some point. So we... Uh, Lot in, in China, live video was ahead of the U.S. So huh. went over to Hong Kong through some contacts. I got introduced to people there. And we'd always, you know, at Verisign and some of these companies, they were global companies. So we always had done business in Asia and had a Japanese subsidiary. So I understood a lot about how those are structured. We had a, a global advertising agency invest in the company and a venture firm who had satellite firms all over the world. So I kind of understand the structure and how venture investors and capital markets in these companies so we ended up entering into a, uh, and this is where the China story starts. We ended up entering into a relationship with a publicly traded New York Stock Exchange Chinese company called Jupai mm -hmm. Holdings, still publicly traded today. Mm -hmm. They what was that to, again? I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure, especially the the the, the foreign language names that those are clear yeah, to viewers. Yeah, it's Jupai J U P A I uh, Jupai okay. Holdings, and it was a publicly traded wealth management firm. So think of a uh, Goldman, you know, small Goldman Sachs mm -hmm. in China invest a lot in real estate and was doing uh, investment in tech companies and trying to move into the U.S. with the Chinese Americans here. And uh, so they committed, signed investment documents to invest $20 million in the company, uh, mm -hmm. never funded a dime of it. We weren't able to launch the company and we sued them in uh, federal court initially in California. And then it was transferred to Delaware. And that was when I kind of really started to delve in. We filed a lawsuit in 2017 and tried mm -hmm. to understand like, what was going on and how do these things really work and uh, what 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 do you mean how, how, what's really going on you mean the the, well, the different ties between i mean the different ties between you know uh, my, my, chinese my story companies is, and how they're tied to american companies what, what do you what do you uh, what do you mean yeah my story is a little differently because i'm not like you know 
you know, we always heard these things like from Xi Jinping, win-win cooperation, and hmm. uh, China is going to become more westernized as they're uh, yeah. like I'll say, so, the balance sort of trade. Right. So I was bought in hook, line, and sinker, right? I was huh. doing a transaction in China, taking a Chinese investment in a live video company. And Wait, I, I just want I just want to make sure with the timeline. I just want to make sure the timeline that you started so that your business with China started after uh, Xi Jinping is uh, is at the top of the regime. We signed the term. We signed the term sheet in 2016, so it was about okay. two months. It was in October, so it was about a month before the election, our 2016 election. Mm-hmm. You know, she she had really started to mm-hmm. insert herself in 2013, and even a little bit before that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so my perspective is a little bit different, right? Because I'm coming from mm-hmm. this, like, you know, 1.4 billion people, burgeoning middle class, being becoming more like us, more Westernized. Mm-hmm. Like I was bought into that store. Right. Uh, what, so, so, what, much what, so what, I bought what, my yeah. company on it. Right. So what's appealing? I mean, this is interesting because a lot of us are wondering all the time, don't you guys see that this is a, or doesn't American business see that this is a hollow, a hollow entity? It looks very impressive externally. Uh, but when we look at something like Shanghai, we understand the true nature of, uh, of the CCP. So at the time, as you say, when you were a newcomer, what was the appeal in 2016? Well, listen, you, 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 I mean, large market, right? Growing income, right. Uh, becoming more westernized, more open, more access to outsiders. Mm-hmm. You know, they were investing a lot of capital and ideas. They were trying to replicate mm-hmm. what, you know, the venture capitalists started to really move in there in 2005 in the, in the tech space and in that space started to really invest in that market. Uh, you know, smart people, there were all sorts of things like that. So it was, uh, completely bought in and sold into that story. Uh, and so, well, when did you start to go? Uh, when did you start to go south on that story? When did it strike you that that story, um, that story was uh, a, a fiction? You know, probably when I was uh, hiring lawyers to file the case yes. in the <laughs> district of. Uh, that would do it. We started yeah, in California, know. yeah. But actually, candidly, yeah. like I looked at this company and it was like they had big investors. They had UBS. Hmm. Julius Baer, like it looked very reputable. Huh. Uh, and I didn't do a lot of homework. They were doing a lot of work huh. with private equity firms, seemed like good people. We had a good relationship. They came over here. We went over to Hong Kong. So it wasn't really until I had to convince lawyers to take the case hmm. and that we would be able to get paid if we won the case huh. that uh, I really started to drill in and say, what's going on with this company? If we're going to have to put some money into attorneys and we're going to have to convince attorneys, we need to convince them you can get paid at the end. And this and was a so New York I, Stock Exchange listed company. 